Okay. So, um, last class, does anyone remember where we ended last class? Uh, where we finished? Anyone? We were actually looking at a question. Um, last class. Okay, so we, we were looking at the question, you know, is it is it okay to plan? Yeah, uh, Abhinas, planning versus uh, boasting. And we were, we were looking at some arguments or some, uh, yeah, some, some arguments that, uh, or um, some scriptures that people might use to say that it is, it is not okay to plan, right? So, so we were looking at some of these scriptures. We looked at Matthew chapter six, uh, which talks about, which gives us a great assurance about, um, you know, about uh, the Lord's ability to take care of us, the Lord's ability to take care of our lives, um, as He would, uh, if, uh, you know, the lilies of the field or or the birds of the. The Lord's ability to take care of us and provide for us, um, but the recurring thing that we see. The recurring instruction that we see in that passage, um, Matthew chapter six twenty four to thirty four, is um, the the recurring instruction: "Do not worry," or, or sometimes the asking the question, "You know, why do you worry?" I do not worry. Do not worry, and then the assurance of the Lord that uh, He is well able to take care. Okay, so um, so we see that it is uh, it is it does not contradict. The whole thing of planning, okay, or wanting to plan, and uh, and we know, you know, uh, to plan is to um, have a detailed um, uh, set of. It's a process, and have a detailed set of steps to in order to achieve something, in order to reach somewhere, um, in order to do something. Right. So you, ha it's a process. You have a detailed uh, set of steps to do that, and um, so. So this scripture does it does not talk about planning, but it actually talks about not worrying, right? And and the whole issue of uh, worrying leading to lack of faith or worrying leading to you know distrust in in uh, in our savior. So it's not about planning. And the other scripture that we saw was in the book of James, where um, you know James actually rebukes the. Uh, people and uh, the this, uh, the believers, and he says, you know, um, come now, those who say, you know, James chapter four, who say that we will go to such a place, we will do these things, and we, we spend a year there, and then buy and sell, and you know, and then he goes on to say, you boast in your arrogance. Okay, now this is what you ought to say that if the Lord wills, we will do this, and so saying, you know, there is arrogance, and you are boasting. And so we we saw that uh, you know that is again not planning you know where um, he he's actually uh, you know uh, he's coming against boasting he's saying you know do not boast or uh, do not be arrogant so that also uh, you know is not against planning right then the other argument that that people might have is hey the the Lord is anyway coming back. Right. The Lord's return is imminent. The Lord is coming back. Uh, so why should we plan? Why should we live our lives this way? And um, why should we organize our, li our lives? And and that's a, I mean, that's a dangerous place or that's a dangerous thought process because, you know, you would, uh, we would not accomplish anything in the sense, whatever uh, purposes that God might have for us, uh, we would not end up doing that because we're not putting any effort and we're just waiting, sitting around, waiting for the Lord's return, and and so it is not practical. It is going. It is. It is just a waste of time. You know, waste of everything that uh, time and ability and resources the Lord has given to us um, to go to go out and and do the things that He's called us to do, and uh, you know, to be uh, to, to be a member in the body of Christ. 
to carry out um, you know whatever he has called us to do to edify the body of Christ through the gifts and graces that he's given us um, and the and the whole uh, the, the commission the great commission itself to go make disciples of all nations you know so if we're going to be saying you know anyway the Lord is coming so you know why do all that so you know that is not a logical thing that is not a practical thing it is it is against the plans and purposes of god so so uh, the 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 best thing to do is to live each day where yes we we hope for the return we we wait expectantly for the return of the lord but uh, and, but then we plan as though you know we we, we plan for you know, periods of time like it could be for today it could be for uh you know uh, for a decade it could be for uh, you know all these chunks of time that we would plan and live live it out okay so today let's look at um, you know planning a, a little more you know some more scripture where we see that planning is indeed uh, a characteristic of god or it is uh, an innate character of god it's an innate natural uh, nature of of God Himself. Okay, so uh, a few scriptures we can look into it. So you know, so we know that hey, I'm not doing anything unspiritual. You know, the problem is, um, I mean, this understanding. You know, uh, why we think sometimes planning is, uh, I mean, it's it's against God's will or you know purposes. It's it's because we confuse the leading of the Holy Spirit. Right, we we uh, we confuse that, or we 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 place priority on that, like we rightly should. But we think that okay, if I'm going to be indulging in planning, then it's a work of the flesh; it's not a work of the spirit. But the fact is that God is definitely not against sitting down, using our mental faculties, and planning. But he very much would want to be part of that process itself, right? Like we see in in a lot of uh, you know uh, 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 scriptures, which um, which which involve God in the process of planning, right? So so it it becomes a very enjoyable process. It becomes something where we commune with God, we fellowship with God. God pours out his heart to us and where we can receive and incorporate that in what we need to do. Right. So uh, let me just share the screen and um, yeah, let's look at um, some of the scriptures which point to obviously I'm just sharing the notes. Okay. So let's look at Romans 8, 29. So it says that, for, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Okay, now that verse itself, that word purpose talks about his intentions, talks about what he is determining to do, something that is that he is setting forth, like exhibiting, putting on display. Okay, his intentions that he's putting on display his is you know whatever he's determining that he's exhibiting so it's, it talks about what he has thought what he has decided that he will do right uh, verse 29 for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren so this is also something that he already uh, thought about he already planned out that Yes, you know this person who is going to choose me, and uh, who is going to choose the uh, plan of salvation. Uh, he or she is going to be conformed to the image of my son. You know, he has thought about it, he has planned it out, and he has put it in. You know, he just rolled it out, right? So we see that. Okay, uh, Ephesians one, verses nine to twelve. You know, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Again, the same uh, word there, prothesis, which means that he has you know, thought about it earlier, and that is his intention, and he is making it now known to us. Right? That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things, in Christ, both which are in heaven and are on earth in him. Right? So we see that. So, um, And then we again see in verse 11, having 
being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Okay, who works all things according to the counsel of his will, according to his plan, according to his purpose. Right? So we see that um, this whole uh, function of planning is very much part of God. Right? It is his characteristic. So we don't have to be, uh, we don't have to look at it as something fleshly. Uh, uh, well, there is, uh, uh, there is a, you know, there is a way by which we can actually, uh, I mean, there is fleshly planning, but we are not looking at that. We are looking at uh, planning in line with uh, the Spirit of God. Planning as led by the Spirit of God. Okay, uh, Psalm thirty-three, eleven again. The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of His heart to all generations. It's right? something that is uh, forethought, something that is thought through, uh, and something, uh, you know, the, all these steps that he's actually um, uh, planned out and he's executing, right? So, uh, Proverbs 4, verse 14, sorry, 14 and verse 8, the wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way, but the folly of fools is deceit. Verse 15, the simple believe every word, but the prudent considers well his steps. So any task that needs to be done, okay, what, what needs to be done? What is the task? What does it involve? It's, you know, it's prudent to consider those steps, right? It is prudent. Um, it, is, it is wise. It is wisdom to consider the steps and, and to see because it's, there is safety in that. And that, that also uh, enables us to do the task well, okay. So, so what are some guidelines like when it comes to planning? Okay, we know that we can plan in a fleshly manner, where we uh, we can plan in an arrogant manner, right? Where we can plan and say, okay, I'll do this, I'll do that, and it, it can be an arrogant boast. So, so what are some things that I need to consider and have in place so that I don't err on that side, but uh, uh, I actually plan as led by the spirit of god plan something in line with god right in step with god so here are some things right to look at um proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6 right trust in the lord with all your heart lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths so uh, an amazing word, uh, instruction uh, with reassurance, right? Um, first of all, it has to do with our heart. It has to do with, uh, you know, our attitude. It has to do with the posture internally. So it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Okay? And uh, when, we, when we do that, then obviously we will not lean we will not have other support structures you know it doesn't say that you know you you should not use your understanding should not use your use your learning or your experience but even prior to that you trust in the lord with all your heart so that you're you're not leaning on you know you're not putting your full weight on your own understanding okay in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your parts um, in all your ways you know that's what we are focusing on in all your ways acknowledging you know, acknowledge means to recognize to uh, or to accept to make space right uh, uh, these are some ways by which we can acknowledge so specifically when we say you know I want to acknowledge the Lord so obey his word you know, am I carrying out his word in in this particular task? Right. obeying his word, obeying his leading. You know, there is a prompting of the spirit in our spirit. Now, um, when, I, when we know for sure that, that that is the prompting of the spirit, that is the leading of the spirit, am I, am I following through? Right? So obeying his word, there, the word has the precepts, the principles, the values, the standards. So it's plain and clear. So uh, am I following that? Second one is, uh, you know, the, the spirit of God who indwells me uh, when I lean in, he, uh, when I ask, you know, he's, 
he, he's giving me wisdom you know james uh, uh, chapter 1 talks about that you know so uh, is it james chapter 2 but you know talks about uh, how he will lead how he will give wisdom so i'm leaning in and obeying his leading okay and uh, thirdly what was helpful is uh, you know is it glorifying the lord okay this task that i'm setting out to do this this thing that i'm planning this uh, whatever it is you know is god being glorified okay uh, and and that is what we see in uh, uh, 1 corinthians 10 and uh, 31 okay 1 corinthians 10 and verse uh, 31 therefore whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do do all to the glory of god okay so whatever you do um if it's you know even a simple task like eating or drinking and a mundane everyday thing uh do all for the glory of god you know have that uh, as a big picture you know is god being glorified or is he being dishonored right in in the way i'm doing it is he being dishonored so um you know desiring the lord jesus to be glorified again a guiding principle when it comes to you know planning right planning um according to god's ways right placing kingdom priorities first matthew 6:33 seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you so uh, uh, am i seeking uh, god's kingdom his rule and reign uh, you know above everything else or um, so so these are some principles to help us this is a you know something to guide us right um, with regard to his word with regard to acknowledging him uh, in all our ways okay. secondly we see that uh, it's it's about the leading of the holy spirit we are privileged to hear the voice of the spirit we are privileged to um, have uh, the holy spirit indwell us and we are indeed privileged to hear his voice and to Uh, you know with the intention of following right the holy spirit wants to lead us uh in our lives right um and uh romans 8 and verse 14 for as many as are led by the spirit of god these are sons of god so which means that you know we are part of god's family there's a shift in identity that happened there's a shift in relationship that happened and this is who i am as a child of god um so i have the privilege of being led by the spirit because of who i am you know it's it's because of who i am you know just think about that the privilege of being led by the spirit because of who i am because of who i have become in christ right so something has shifted something has changed now i've come in and i've received this privilege of being led by god and we are you know looking at it in the area of planning you know um and uh, you know i know some of us would be involved in making some big plans you know some um some very crucial plans right maybe it has to something to do with the organization maybe it's something to do with the future um and uh, and sometimes we don't venture into it because it's so scary right? we don't want to plan we don't want to venture into it we don't always saying you know i really don't know it's it's just uh, the mind just seems to freeze saying i don't even want to think about it right i'm i'm not able to you know uh foresee I, i'm not able to go beyond this you know well the holy spirit the helper is here to lead us the one who is able to see into the future right the one who knows the end from the beginning is there to prompt us lead us and uh, you know and and establish those steps as we commit our works to him you know establish those thoughts for us right so you know whatever mind block that we might have or whatever you know that thing that uh, you know saying i'm like, i'm not able to progress beyond this um well may the lord lead us as we open up our hearts to him and uh, may he lead us because this is who you are you know this is what you've become and uh, and because you are a child of god your son and a daughter of god you you are led you have the privilege of being led by the spirit of god right so um yeah uh, so so let's invite him into our the process of planning just listen to him lean in to him 
and uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a very very you know weird thing a super spiritual activity you know um you know as natural as how you would listen to a friend how, how you would hear a friend out you know we can have those impromptu conversations with god and say lord what do you think right? can you just just impress upon my heart i commit this um, you know this whole activity this project this plan uh, this future thing lord into your mighty hands i just pray that you would lead me right even as i sit down and and plan right uh, another very helpful thing okay so if we so we looked at a couple of things right we looked at the word uh and how to acknowledge the lord in all our ways we looked at uh, you know following the leading of the holy spirit very very important what a what an awesome privilege that we have um and thirdly to understand seasons okay now this is very important because um well um you know you know god does work in seasons and uh, we are in you know as as we grow both uh, you know chronologically uh, and as we age and also uh, you know spiritually we go through different seasons in life and um, uh, you know if you consider you know if you look at it like a, maybe you're a student maybe you're a, you know you're married with family uh, you know as a professional young professional you know all those things we we go through and um, and when it comes to ministry maybe church planting uh, or uh, you know you've started a ministry it goes through the seasons of uh, you know the foundation stage or foundation phase where uh, where a lot of groundwork is done a lot of digging deep is done and uh, you know where the foundation needs to be laid it needs to be strong so you know it's it's a it's a different season um, so you know when it comes to the church it's like it's like laying the foundation it's laying laying the basics um uh, they they may not be you know a lot of travel involved like you're not traveling out but you're focusing in one place and making sure it is made strong and so on right so then i'm sure you you you'll study this in in, in another uh, subject but so all these kind of so understand you know what season of life am i in you know, I, i remember you know i, I don't know if i shared with this with you uh, with this class but i remember having a conversation with um, with with a, uh, a young person i mean uh, a married person in um, you know in church and she was very very disappointed because um, you know she used to be very very active in church and uh, um, serving in in church in, in various ways uh, this was in an, in another state where she uh, where she was uh, you know as a as a single person and and now she is finding it very difficult uh, because um, she was you know equating that activity that participation and being involved and all that to um, you know to Uh, uh to having a thriving spiritual life you know to be able to serve etc uh, to be able to give and uh, and so on so um she was finding it she couldn't do the same thing so she was finding it very frustrating very difficult putting herself down saying uh, you know i'm not able to do that so you know i used to be able to do that now i'm not able to do that and and so you know equating that to i'm not i'm not doing anything for god you know that kind of a um you know thought process um so you know the whole thing of season i had to have a conversation about season hey you're in a different season the responsibilities are different therefore you know in that season you see you ask god see god lord what are these what are the doors that i can step into right what are the ways by which i can serve you know where i am maybe you know my my time the, the way i spend my time is different and uh, it is it is a different season so my priorities have shifted and it it's it's all good you know it's it's all designed by god family uh, marriage family children everything it's 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 god's design god's plan so ask the designer now this is how my 24 hours are spent so in this god you know how can i serve you 
in this God, with this sphere of influence, with these people who I'm connected with, you know, now how can I serve you? How can I, you know, uh, bring my uh, time and resources and abilities and gifting and how can I serve you? And the, and the Lord will, you know, open the right doors and, and connect you with the right people and set up those divine appointments uh, so that you can, you know, you can do this. So there's no point in, you know, uh, looking back at, at the season that has gone by and trying to force things there, you know, trying to do the same thing here, you know, it, it's not going to work because a lot of things have shifted, right? So understand the seasons as you plan for your life, right? Understand the, the times and the seasons that you are living in. And if it's a ministry, understand the times and seasons. So, so the plans don't conflict. Right? Uh, it's a realistic plan. Right? Um, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 1, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. Uh, verse 11, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts. Um, you know, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end, right? Using our own reasoning and efforts, yes, uh, no one can, except that the Holy Spirit reveals to us, right? Uh, we see in 1 Corinthians 2. So, um, yeah, so there is a purpose, there is a time, there is a season, understand that. Um, yeah, uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 6, uh, because for every matter, there is a time and judgment. Um, so discern that. Um, verse 5 talks about a wise man's heart discerns both time and judgment. So so when it comes to planning, uh, especially when it comes to making a life plan, we're making uh, you know certain things and um, where you you're going to be and what you're going to be doing and uh, and also for ministry and other significant things, right? Um, understand the time, understand the season. Okay, so it will help greatly uh, so that we don't we don't hurt ourselves, right? We don't damage our lives. Um, yeah. The fourth thing is, uh, you know, the fourth and fifth thing seems to be, uh, it might seem to be a little, you know, contradictory, but let's look at this, right? Dare to dream, okay? Um, because, you know, Ephesians 3.20 talks about how the Lord is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, okay? He's able to do that. He's able to do more, more than what we ask, more than what we uh, you know, more than even what we imagine, right? Uh, ask or think, it says. And it's according to the power that works in us, the power of the Holy Spirit, right? according to his power that is at work in us. And because it is his power that is at work in us, you know, he is able to do much more. Uh, and uh, so he is limitless and we are limited by our thinking. Uh, we are limited by you know, uh, our, our limitations, you know, whatever we put as limitations. So he's able to do much more, right? So, so when, when it comes to, you know, dreaming, when it comes to thinking big, um, think with God, dream with God, right? Um, it's, it's not assumption or it's not boasting. When we submit to God and say, Lord, what is your you know what is your plan? What is it that you're doing? You know because this is this is how he's able to do. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. Right to him be the glory. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly. So just think about that. And exceedingly above abundantly above all that we ask. Exceedingly abundantly above all that we think. And it's according to the power of the Holy Spirit, according to his power that is at work. So, so the thing is, dare to dream. Now, there are many, many times when, you know, we are put on a restraint, right? We've, uh, um, especially when we've, when we've traveled through life, right? When we journeyed through life, uh, when we gone through the ups and downs and maybe face some failures, maybe some 
pain, some regret. And, and the casualty is that our ability to dream, right? Our ability, when we say dream, ability to, you know, think big, ability to dream big, um, have big plans. And uh, I'm sure that, you know, there are some things that you just discarded saying, hey, yeah, it's 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 not uh, it's not worth it or maybe it was a it was indeed uh, something that was you know that was burning in your heart right every time maybe you see a need and that's burning in your heart you know it's a, it's a big plan you know it's a, but time has passed and uh, you know maybe things have happened and we've reached a stage where we're saying like okay I I don't know maybe it's time to disrupt you know, disregard it or discard it, right? So when it comes to planning with God, when it comes to, you know, uh, dreaming with him, he's going to dream big. His plan is going to be, you know, big plans for us, very significant, big. So can we allow that to happen? You know, can we dream again? Can we dream again? Um, um, so, you know, there's something that I just want to place before us. You know, whatever has happened uh, in the past, whatever has hindered us from dreaming uh, big, um, you know, having a big vision. Uh, you know, can we can we come back to Him? You know, can we return to the Lord, as we see in Hosea? You know, return to the Lord in these ways. You know, what happened to those? You know, those moments, those seasons when you you know you were you were really pumped up, on faith, on fire, um, passionate. You know, uh, why is it quenched? Right? Uh, can you go back to that place now? Well, the Lord might you know enable. It's like this. You know, uh, when we have these big plans and have those big visions, um, vision now. Well, God might bring it to fruition in different ways, right? Uh, you might actually spark um, a dream in, um, uh, yeah, you might spark a, you know, a, a dream in others. You, God might use you to influence, uh, you know, others. And uh, maybe the resources uh, that others have, you know, God might bring that in many ways, right? So, um so the thing is, you know, it, it might, it need not be just you carrying the weight of that. Sometimes that also hinders us. And sometimes that also hinders us from dreaming big, you know, I, it's, it's too much for me or, um, you know, uh, I, I don't have the resources or we are limited by, you know, I don't have the strength. I don't have the ability. I don't have the resources. So it's better that I don't even think about it. Right. But what if, you know, God, takes this forward in in many other ways right what if you are in the the plan that you have the the idea that you have you know it sparks something big in others and god is able to bring that together or god is able to take that forward right so uh dare to dream okay prabhaka has a question um the children of um, the sons of Issachar uh had understanding of the times so how can we also have understanding of the times um well, what did uh, Issachar's son do? Well, I, with regard to what they did, now I I do not know too much of that, but we we do see that they had understanding of the times, and we also know that it is God who changes times and seasons, and uh, we also know that the holy uh, like uh, God knows the end from the beginning. So, um, so the thing is to have an intimate walk with Him. Right. So, and to and to really desire that, um, uh, and 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 also I think, um, I mean, this is just my thought. Um, to uh, to also, you know, to 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 also be obedient in the small things. Right. It's um, when God, when we, when we want, you know, this understanding of His will, uh, especially you know for our own lives and um, to be uh, to be obedient. And in the in the small instructions, you know, to be uh, obedient in the st- in the small steps that he's asked us to do, and to carry it out faithfully, and uh, so that he can give us more, 
uh, of what he wants us to do and so that he can entrust us with more and uh, you know this is this is a privilege um, uh, that we have that that we can lean into the wisdom of God who is infinite we can lean into his uh, understanding which is infinite and he is he chooses to reveal right and uh, yeah so it it uh, it starts with an intimate walk with God it starts with a faithful and obedient heart to carry out uh, so that he is able to entrust us with more right and and the, well that's one part of it the other part of it is that uh, the lord might sovereignly you know choose certain people to reveal more you know uh, especially um, like god raises up some um, as his representative as as an agent of uh, as as a catalyst right to to usher in a move to bring in uh, uh, you know uh, uh, maybe a, 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 a some of the teachings which which are which are kind of you know not there and, and the, especially in the restorative moves of god and when we study about um, revivals and visitations and we see that that god raises up a person or a community and and ushers in um, you know what is what is not there or what is not um, uh, you know predominantly held on by the church and then he brings in that into that body right so uh, so god might sovereignly do that also right um, to to download okay here is this and i just want you to do that a prophetic uh, voice right so um, but it starts with our you know our hunger our uh, uh, our expectation and our faithfulness and an intimate work. Yeah. So hope that helps, Prabhaka. Yeah. Okay. I think somebody else is. Um... Uh, I have a follow up question. Can I ask? Okay, yeah. yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, so uh, this month, Pastor, like I've been uh, led, I've, I've heard this, like understand the times and seasons. This is the third time I'm hearing, Pastor. Mm. I feel like I want to understand more, being led to understand the times and seasons. So, what should I do now, Pastor? Like, where do I start? Like, hmm. Um. So, personally, you just feel you you feel that your uh, this is kind of thing which has come to you again and again, right? This yes, yes, Pastor. Very much leading and uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, like what we shared now, that, that would be the step to start off, uh, 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 Prabhaka. Like, you know, it because it all starts and continues and, you know, is brought to maturity with God, with the Holy Spirit. So it starts with, uh, you know, uh, us having an intimate walk with Him. Because he He's the one who brings the understanding, right? He's the one who brings the revelation. So it's uh, it starts and continues with him. Um, so um, yeah. So I'll I'll just leave it at that. Um, so uh, I I I guess you're you're continuing to walk with God. You know your your posture of your heart is to desire more. And um, I'm just reminded of uh, you know Mark chapter four where um, you know in the parable of the sower the Lord says uh, uh, after just explaining parable of the sower he goes on to say um you know um, just let me just read out that verse um yeah mark 4 and uh, verse 24 it says take heed what you hear with the same measure you use it will be measured to you and to you who hear more will be given right so uh, for whoever has to him more will be given but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away um, talking about uh, you know revelation and uh, understanding and uh, and and hearing basically hearing from God you know receiving from Him so He says uh, you know the Lord says take heed you know be careful how you hear and with the same measure that you use you know you, you you're using a certain measure quantity um, you know something uh, maybe a vessel uh, you know so it's talking about a hunger level or a uh, our intention and uh, with what expectation that you go to God. Um, and he is faithful to fill that measure. So he's saying, you know, with what measure, measure you use, it will be measured back to you, right? So um, so that's another thing, you know, there's a, we have a key there where uh, the Lord is willing, the Lord is able, 
and uh, from our side he you know requires that hunger and he requires that expectation and uh, and then the lord will you know lead you, you know lead us uh, on that path right um and specifically if the lord has been talking to you about you know this one thing you know understanding of times and seasons so the thing is to seek him more and to ask him uh, you know specifically lord what is it i'm willing to learn and what is it and uh, he's going to show he's going to lead yeah um hope that's helpful yes. Yeah. yes master thank you so much. yeah okay right okay so um so dare to dream right so um so maybe we can just take some time you know what is what are some things that we discarded along the way maybe there were some things that got put in your heart and you just feel like hey, i i don't know i'm too old i'm too you know i'm not qualified uh um, maybe we you know we've kind of um, discounted you know that that thought that dream um uh, or maybe you, you felt okay it's too big it's too wonderful it's too amazing maybe just overwhelmed by the thing um but can we ask the lord to you know remind us you know, bring us uh, or bring these things back to us you know and uh, and uh, so that we can pursue that right um so let, let's just pray let's ask the lord to um, but before that i just want you to just make take some time to just write down just jot down you know what is it that um, what what whatever comes to your mind you know what is it that you you know that you have discarded you, know, you had this dream you discarded um for several reasons right um you gave yourself several reasons saying that it can't be done so therefore i'm discarding right um can you just uh, you know put it back or write it down so you get to see it right okay um let's do that okay i i hope uh, we're able to put down something and maybe uh, maybe some of us are saying okay i don't have any dream i don't have any compelling you know desire at this stage in my life you know i, I don't seem to have anything compelling uh desire i don't know if uh, you know some of us are in that state saying i i'm just coasting you know day to day month to month uh nothing you know nothing comp- no fire right 
Kennedy, I, I, I see what you've put down. Can you just explain, please? Um, okay, these are things that uh, are hindering. Is that what you're saying? Um, because of which you you put down the dream? Yeah, uh, from my personal working life. Eh? And after mm -hmm. doing the APC college, I've learned that Patient, impatient, anger, outburst, or at the time, especially taking a shortcut, can hinder your planning and can make you lose your focus. Right, right. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, yeah, it's like I was saying, okay, Kennedy just shared what, what really, you know, caused him to discard or causes one to discard. You know. um, so, so maybe, um, like you're saying, maybe there's no compelling desire. You know, you can ask the Lord to, you know, spark that, right? Um, to set that fire. For whatever reason, you're just refusing to dream, right? It could be past trauma, you know, whatever. Um, no initiative, you know, just coasting. Let's see what happens, kind of thing. But um, like we can ask the Lord, Lord, will there be healing? You know, I just want to, you know, dream again. Just want to be, you know. I just want to come alive, right? Um, come alive to your plans. Come alive to your purposes. Come alive to your desires. Let me do that. Right? Okay. Okay. Let's pray. Uh, I think we, yeah, we need to take a break now. So we, let's just pray. Father God, we we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. God, thank you for the, the plans, beautiful plans that you have, the things that you purpose in your heart. Uh, Lord, like we see in J Jeremiah. When when eleven, Lord, your the plans that you have for us, the thoughts, the very thoughts that you have for us, good, beautiful, not for calamity. God, we we thank you, but to prosper us, God, we thank you, God, and and uh, we thank you that we have you as our God. And Lord, even as we've read now in Ephesians three twenty, God, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And we thank you for that. And Lord, today I just pray that uh, whatever plans that might have fallen by the wayside, Lord, that it'll be picked up, dusted, and uh, Lord, there'll be a, f that you'll cause us to have a, take a fresh look at it. And uh, not just look, but um, I pray that you'll cause us to, Lord, re-engage on our hearts with it again. And for those of us who are, God, maybe um, saying that there's no fire, there's no passion, and there's no compelling reason, a purpose, or plan, yet, Lord, I pray that there will be a spark. Yes, Father God, I pray that, um, Lord, even as we look back, and, and Lord, the way you've led us, God, that there will be a spark, Lord, that even as we Continue, Lord, on with you, Father God. Yes, Lord. And, and and that's the key thing, that it's according to the power that works in us, according to the power of your Holy Spirit. So as we continue to fellowship, commune with your Spirit and be saturated with your Word, I pray that you will take us into all that you have for us, God. Uh, we just want to thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, uh, we'll come back at 11.03, okay, 10 minutes. Thank you. God bless.